that unique because see many gods were born on December 25th I mean many gods had attributes of virgin deity and stuff like that and the queen of heaven and I, I had to email that guy and let him know that the research he did was right but he didn't go far back enough in history you got to bring that back to the Tower of Babel and if anybody can duplicate what God wants us to believe you can be sure it'll be the devil I mean, yeah, that's true, and everybody knows that Jesus was not born on December 25th, and the Virgin Mary was a virgin before Jesus was born, but she was not the mother of God, and she is not the queen of heaven. So if many cultures around the world believe that kind of stuff, it's not because the Bible taught it, it's because, welcome to mystery, Babylon the Great. Now, in addition to the prayers and devotions that are directed to Mary, Catholics also honor various saints. These saints, according to the Catholic position, are martyrs or notable people of honor that the church have pronounced saints. Now, in many minds, the word saints refers only to a person who has attained some special degree of holiness. But what does the Bible say? All true Christians are saints, even those who may slackly lack spiritual maturity and knowledge. That's why the writings of Paul to Ephesus, Ephesians, Corinth, Rome were all addressed to the saints. Saints, it should be noticed, were living people, not those who had died. If we want a saint to pray for us, it must be a living person. But if we try to commune with people that have died, what else is this but a form of spiritism? In the book of Isaiah, it says, and when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? It's a sin to pray to people that have dead. It's another form of occultic practice found amongst paganism. Repeatedly, the Bible condemns all attempts to commune with the dead. Now this is found in Leviticus chapter 19:21, in Isaiah 19:3, in 1 Samuel 3 and 7. Yet many Catholics repeat the Apostles' Creed to the dead. Now the Catholic Encyclopedia says, Catholic teaching regard prayers for the dead is bound up inseparably with the doctrine of the communion of saints, which is an article of the Apostles' Creed. Prayer to the saints and martyrs collectively or to someone of them in particular are recommended. Now this is found in volume 4, page 653. The actual wording of the Council of Trent is that the saints who reign together with Christ offer up their own prayer to God for men. Now the Catholic Encyclopedia goes on to say that this cannot be proven from Scripture. With this statement, we agree. Nowhere do the scriptures indicate that the living can be blessed by prayers from people that have already died. Instead, in many ways, the Catholic doctrine regarding saints are similar to the old pagan ideas that were held regarding the gods. The goddess of wisdom, the goddess of health, the goddess of science. Now, looking back to the mother of the false religion of Babylon, we find that the people then there also prayed to a plurality of gods. In fact, the Babylonian system developed until they had 5,000 gods and goddesses. This is in the same way that Catholics believe concerning the saints. The Babylonians believed that at one time they had been living heroes. This is Ishtar, the goddess of war. There was a god for every problem, a god for this and a god for that, a god God for every individual person's problems along with a God for each of the different occupations. Let's turn to that program on the educational channel to see that the Buddhists and Hindus also believe that they have a plurality of gods, gods for this and gods for that. Devout Hindus told me that Ganges water kept in a bottle never goes bad. Pious locals cook and wash in nothing else. It's a great healer. The Ganges, in other words, is a goddess. She purifies everything and everyone she touches, instantly and utterly. Now, my friends, this is the goddess of purification. There was also gods of district, certain districts, and the one coming up is the god of learning. Now, district gods are also found within pagan customs in the Bible. Once a year, like most schools and colleges in India, they celebrate the festival of Saraswati, goddess of art and learning. 
Yes, my friends, from Babylon, like the worship of the Great Mother, such concepts about God spread to the nations. Even the Buddhists in China had their worship of various deities, as the goddess of sailor, the god of war, the god of special neighbors or occupation. Let's go back to that program recorded off the educational channel to show you that Hinduism believes the same concept. On his feast day, he had the head of an elephant, sat cross-legged, was made of painted clay, and came in different sizes. This was Ganesha, the remover of obstacles. We were going to need Ganesha. Are you a devotee of Ganesha yourself, Mr. Sharma? No, particularly not. I am devotee of Kali. Of Kali? Kali. What does that mean? Kali is a wife of Shiva in her uh, terrific aspect, not tolerating any wrong. Mm -hmm. She's, yeah. When you see pictures of Kali, she looks, she's got a, a bloody tongue right. and is carrying right. heads. Yes. Uh, she appears very terrific. Yep. And many people tell that she is uh, not a, a good goddess, mm. but actually she she is terrific to finish bad. Yep. Finish She's a violent bad. goddess. Yes, violent goddess. Yes. But she is violent to finish uh, the, what is bad. What is it? Now the Syrians believe the powers of certain gods were limited to certain areas, as an incident in the Bible records. It says their gods are the gods of the hills. Therefore, they are stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they in 1 Kings 20 and 23. When Rome conquered the world, these same ideas were very much in evidence as following sketches will show. Bridget was the goddess of smiths and poetry. Minerva was the goddess of wisdom and handicrafts. Venus, the goddess of sexual love. Now Ceres was the goddess of corn and wheat and growing vegetation. Our word cereal fittingly comes from her name. Now Mercury was the god of orators. That's why Paul was called Mercurius. Mercury, because he was a chief speaker. Now it's a known fact that pagans have gods for different occasions, gods for this and that, in the same way Catholics do. Janus was the god of the new beginning, the strange two-headed god from whom we derive the name of the month January, new beginning. Now my friends, this is out of a world encyclopedia of world religions. Now with the idea of gods and goddesses associated with various events in life now established in pagan Rome, it was but another step for these same concepts to be finally merged into the church of Rome. Now the god and goddesses were simply recalled and named saints. The old ideas of gods associated with certain occupations and days has continued in the Roman Catholic belief in saints and saint days as the following table shows. Actors, Saint Genius, athletes, Saint Sebastian, butcher is Saint Hadrian, fisherman is Saint Andrews. Let's go on to say that the Roman Catholic Church also has saints for the following. Baron women, Saint Anthony, immigrants, Saint Francis, lovers, Saint Raphael. Well, Catholics are taught also to pray to certain saints with certain afflictions, such as arthritis, St. James, epilepsy, St. Vitus, disease of the eyes, St. Lucy, skin disease, St. Rock. Yes, my friends, everything considered, it seems evident that the Roman Catholic system of patron saints developed out of an early belief in gods devoted to days, occupation, and various human needs. Now, this is clear also on our program, the educational channel, as also Buddhists believe the same thing, a god for this and that. The 30 million gods of India. And the trouble isn't the number, 330 million, but the word gods. If people call them Hindu saints, the numbers would be less of a problem, and it wouldn't seem to be too bad a label. After all, Hindu gods, like Catholic saints, have their festivals and feast days. They are the objects and means of devotion. They are regarded as a pathway through to God and seen as reflecting God back onto the earth like a mirror. 
Well, I asked the Mahatma, who lives on the outskirts of this Bhagwanpur, to try and help me to grasp what the gods were. The words he used could easily have come from a devout Catholic talking about a Christian saint. He described the real god, Brahman, as the powerhouse, and the 330 million visible gods as light bulbs, which were working off divine electricity. Of course, the comparisons between the gods and the saints do collapse very soon. For a start, you can't place many of the Hindu gods in recorded history. Most of them were born before it. And there's no Hindu equivalent of the papal office that uh, examines the claims of new saints and decides which one should be.